Good morning, everybody. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Yes, sir. I, I, I read somewhere in the scripture where it says, Lift up, O you gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. This King of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, he is the King of glory. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord. The Lord of hope. He is the King of glory. Welcome me in, church. Have your way, Lord. There's a little He's in the back, bound him to be a Somebody, talk about There really is a little in the back, bound him to be a In Psalms 51, beginning at verse 1, he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according unto the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. 
He says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins are ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. He says, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. But verse 7, he says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. He says, hide thy face from my sins, and blot out my iniquities. But verse 10, he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In verse 12, he says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. In verse 13, he says, Lord, when you've done all this, then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. I have read to you Psalms 51, verses 1 through 13, the word of God for the people of God. Father... I strip to Let us pray. Praise God. Father in heaven, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we come this morning thanking you, Lord, for blessing us to see another day. Lord God, for watching over us as we slept last night. For waking us up this morning. Bless us to see another day. Lord God, for blessing us with a reasonable portion of our health, our strength, and the built of our limbs. Lord God, for putting food on our tables. For bless us with our homes, a place to stand. For all these things, Lord, and more, we say thank you. Thank you, Father, help us. Lord God, we appreciate everything you have done and are doing for us. Your material things, Lord God. We appreciate material things. We don't worship them. But Lord, we have needs that we appreciate them. But Lord God, all of our worship, all our praise, all our thanksgiving is for you, Lord God. It's for you, Lord Jesus. That the name of Jesus, every knee. Must bow. Every tongue must confess that you, Lord Jesus, you are Lord. 
and, and save them. Father, help my God, we come this morning seeking to hear words from heaven this morning, seeking to hear your holy words and to be obedient to your holy words. Father, help my God, we want a, a closer walk with you and to develop a closer relationship with our Creator. Father, help my God, we want to live a lifestyle that is pleasing to you. And Lord God, we come this morning ask you, Lord, for, for your forgiveness, that you please forgive us of our sins. Lord, we all have sinned and, and did things that we shouldn't have. Father, forgive us as we forgive others. And Lord God, we must forgive others in order for you to forgive us of our sins. And Lord God, we must be obedient to your holy words. And Lord, we realize that forgiveness is not just for the person who may have hurt us or offended us. Forgiveness is also for us. When we forgive, we let go of that pain or that hurt that we're holding inside of us. When we are obedient to you, Lord God, by forgiving, we feel better. We can move on with our life and do worse that pleases to you. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, in all our ways, we will acknowledge you. The Lord, we know you will direct our path. Yeah. Then we're going through something in life. Lord God, you said your word that you'll never leave us, not forsaken us. And Lord God, we thank you for the gift, you, the precious gift that you offer us. Money came by. Lord God, through your mercy and your grace. Yeah. And Father, we thank you for mercy and grace. Lord God, it's your mercy and your grace that saved a, a sinner like me. And Father, Lord God, we pray this morning for the sick and shut in. We pray for ones in hospitals, nursing homes. We pray for ones recovering at home. Lord God, we pray for a healing this morning. And Lord Jesus, we know you can yes, heal. Lord. Lord, you have many times before. And Lord Jesus, we know that you can heal right now. Yeah, and we must have faith. Yeah, Keep on believing. Keep on trusting you. Lord God, you're able to do all things. Nothing. Nothing is too hard for you. Yeah. And finally, Lord God, this morning we, we pray for the bereaved families. We all know somebody yes, uh, else by our family that's went through bereavement. It can be painful at times. Lord God, you be with us. Comfort us. Comfort our hearts. And Father, Lord God, we pray for our church in the home. Pray for all churches that open this morning in your holy name. The ones that are lifting up the, the mighty name of Jesus. And thanking you, Father in heaven, Lord God, for being so good to us. And Lord God, you are mighty good to us. And Father, Lord God, this morning we, we pray for our children. Lord, our children are our future leaders. You said train a child when you're small. And Father, Lord God, we thank you for the parents here at your home. We've been training the kids. You don't want to bring the kids out to the children's church. Learn more about you. Father, Lord God, the more you hold the words they have on the inside of them, the more they learn about you, the better off we all are. We all get blessed through our children. And Father, we thank you for them. And Father, Lord God, bless us to not just to be a church Sunday, but be a Christian every day of the week. We always be telling somebody about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he did for us. Lord Jesus, you say we should love one another and not hate. Hate is the work of the evil one. Because the evil one has no part in your kingdom. And Father, Him, Lord God, after everything is all said and done here today, I receive your holy words and be blessed by your words. Father, I come up and pray for traveling grace back to our homes, uh, back to our next destinations. And Lord, we take nothing for granted, but everything by prayer and being thankful to you. We don't know what's out there. We run that next turn or, or like Palestine Valley might run in front of us. But Lord, we thank for you and pray for your protections. And we pray, Lord, that we get to our homes, our destination. We give you the praise and you the glory. Only you're worthy. Lord God, we ask deep blessing and more. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior, name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hell, when I get through crawling down here, out in the sunshine, out in the rain, I'm going home to live with Jesus.
Let's give our brothers a round of applause. Amen for that. Give me open. I envision when he broke out with a lily in the valley, a bright and morning star. My spiritual mind went back and I saw a storm coming through the valley. And when that storm come through the valley, the lily was still standing, but all the rest of them were laying down. And I thought about the fact, because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he, I, he lived, you can face tomorrow. So let's rise on our feet. Give God the glory. Because we come to praise him. We come to lift up his name. Because there's no other name under heaven where men might be saved. Except the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Now, I don't know about you, but the choir said the Lord knows whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong. Now, if you know you ain't perfect and you ain't got it all together, I need you to stand up on your feet. I said, if you know you ain't perfect and you ain't got it all together, now can you lift up your hands and say, search me, Lord. Come on. It ain't when you find. Matter of fact, when you find it, Father God, take it out of me. Come on. Can we sing it? One more time. Come on. I said, search me, Lord. 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 I wonder can I get one witness? 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 That know you ain't got it together. That know that God can make it, make it all right for you. You ought to tell them certainly when you find it. That jealous spirit, when you find it, that deep in spirit, when you find it, Lord, that whoremongering spirit, when you find it, Lord, that drunken spirit, take it out of me, take it out of me. I want to be whole, I want to be right, I want to be made, made over. I want to be new, I want to be new, search me Lord, search, 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 search me Lord, search me Lord, oh you know, you know whether I'm right, you know Lord, whether I'm wrong, you know Lord, whether, whether I'm right or wrong. Come on, put your hands together in the house of the Lord. Now, some of y'all got some sedated neighbors, but can you look at your neighbor and say, search them too, Lord? Amen. Y'all be seated in the presence of the Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. I ain't got it all together. I still make mistakes. Still got plenty of missteps. So search me. Look at your neighbor and say, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Hey, Amen. Let's look at, let's look at, um, we have a few announcements for your reading this morning. A few announcements for your reading. Uh, we want to uh, thank God for Dr. Scott Holmes, Sister Wanda Berry, and Chaplain Reverend Jamal Browder. Uh, for that segment we had on Wednesday entitled Grace for Grief. Uh, it's our prayer that you got some information and that you shall apply what you've heard. If you need any additional information, please get with us at newhomestrongoutreach at gmail.com and we'll get some information to you uh, concerning the steps of grief uh, and some ways that you can endure your grieving process properly. Amen. Uh, we want to keep it in front of you. The New Home Next Steps program started this morning. For those of you who are in class, can you make some noise? Oh, it wasn't a lot of them. Okay, y'all just ain't noisy. That's what that is. We got a quiet crew. It's all right. Praise the Lord. We thank God for each of you. We want you to discover what new membership and or membership in the church called New Home Mount Megs looks like. Uh, so we're grateful for everyone who was there. For those of you uh, who missed the first day of class, you still have time to make it up. 9 a.m. every Sunday morning, the month of May, uh, will be the Next Steps new, mem new Membership Orientation class. Uh, we also want you to know T-shirt order forms are still in the foyer. Uh, they've been given out for uh, quite a few Sundays now, and the deadline to turn them in is May the 8th. Please, somebody shout May the 8th. All right, don't show up May the 9th and look for grace, we need you to turn it in on May the 8th, amen? 
Uh, we are grateful um, for, okay, all right, thank you. Uh, we're grateful and we're excited about those who are graduating in the year 2022, uh, those members, uh, those who we love and we want to love on uh, for their diligence in school. Uh, if you have any graduates and we have not been notified properly, uh, please see Sister Tamika Parker, uh, Sister Angela Flowers, or Sister Alicia Peacock. Uh, so that we can make sure that we honor you on graduation Sunday, which is the third Sunday of this month. Uh, that's Sister Tamika Parker, Sister Angela Flowers, or Sister Alicia Peacock. If you're graduating or your children may be graduating in the year 2022. Uh, we also want to keep this before you. Um, Sunday, May the 15th. Is that the third Sunday? Somebody help me. That's the third Sunday. Praise the Lord. All right, so on the third Sunday, uh, the Central Alabama Jaguars uh, are playing the Southern, uh, the Tallahassee Southern Kings, and they're having a faith and family uh, Sunday night, and they have cordially invited New Home to be their special guest. Uh, so it's my prayer for you. We do know uh, T-shirts won't be back in time for those who just ordered them, uh, but we'd love to see New Home show up in new, uh, big numbers, huge numbers, that Sunday, May the 15th at 4 p.m., uh, this game will be at Lanier High School, and the entry fee is $5. They're inviting all church groups. They're inviting all family and friends, but they cordially wanted to invite New Home Mount Megs. Uh, and I want us to show out because they also have asked uh, for our praise dancers to dance at the halftime show. Amen. Can we give God praise? Amen. So we have the new home praise dancers because of this. Uh, we want to have a meeting today immediately after service in the sanctuary uh, for those who plan on participating uh, that day. Those praise dancers who desire to participate uh, that day, there will be a meeting right after service today. Uh, we're going to celebrate and we're going to encourage them. So we're going to be there. Everybody shout May the 15th at 4 o'clock. All right, that's in Lanier, uh, in Lanier's gym on South Court Street here in Montgomery. We're going to celebrate and also uh, encourage those praise dancers. We want you to continue to pray uh, for the family and the friends of the bereaved, uh, those who are dealing with death and, their, uh, and loss uh, in their family. We want to continue to remember the sick and shut-in, uh, Minister Thomas Jenkins, uh, Sister Louise Robinson, uh, Sister Monica Richardson, uh, and Sister Angela Flowers, as well as Sister Tamika Parker. We want to continue to pray for them uh, as they're dealing with uh, healing processes uh, in their lives. It could be us, or rather it's them today, but it could be us tomorrow. Amen. Uh, so we want to continue to pray for others. I think uh, the OG Paul Morton said it like this. He said, if I pray for you, and you pray for me, we can watch God change things. Amen. Let's continue to pray for our seniors. I want to ask this morning, are there any first-time, second-time visitors in the house? Just wave your hand at me. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for this family. How you doing, sister? Brother, my brother. Come on, let's give... Oh, come on, y'all can... Amen. We thank God for you all visiting we pray that something is said, something is sung, uh, that you were invited in with a sweet spirit uh, in the greeters uh, ministry that allow you to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. And is this choir not singing this morning? I want to I want to encourage them because I need them to know that they've been doing an amazing job tilling the field for the word of God. Is there any good soil in the house today? All right. Now, I do want to do this as well. I was I was uh, uh, told by uh, first lady uh, that it was administration appreciation week this last week. Uh, we did not have the opportunity uh, to do so on Facebook, but I want to acknowledge our uh, administration team here at New Home Mount Megs. Uh, Sister, she already looking funny. I see you with your mask on. Sister Olivia Rose, can we give God praise for her? Come on, child of God. Come on, she's the one behind a lot of the things that you see. We praise God for her as our church clerk, but she's not by herself. There's another young lady on the other side. Her name is Sister Beverly Rose. Can we give God praise for her? Amen. 
Now, they work in the back office, and sometimes we forget about the back office, but it's always, I learned in theater, the folk backstage that make the stuff in front of the stage look good. So we got one more brother that's sitting all the way in the back in a whole other room with the door closed, but he probably listening. Can we give God praise for Brother Al Hood? Come on. Amen. We're excited about the team that New Home has given us, and we're so excited uh, at this moment uh, that we have children's church going on in the gym, but we also have the young saints who are in the house, and now you can be dismissed. All of the young teenagers, uh, those who are teens, those in high school, junior high school, uh, you're now dismissed for the young saints uh, service so that y'all can learn the word your own way. Amen. Can we give God praise for them as they're leaving? We want them to be engaged. We want them to also learn from the word of God. Now, I know you've been clapping, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's offering time. It's offering time. Now, some of them got real dark and dismal with their tone, uh, but we can't give the same quantity, but we can't give of the same quality. God loves a cheerful giver. So with a smile on your face underneath your mask, I want you to give the gift that you purpose in your heart to give unto the Lord. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to, uh, but we're grateful for everything you've done. I believe the life of this church is in your hands. It's all about your participation. It's all about what you're willing to give to the kingdom of God that continues to allow it to move forward. Uh, Y'all gonna help me sing? Oh, prayer down, shaking together, running over. Yeah, friends down, running over. As you got the device, it's on the screen. Cash App, dollar sign, New Home Strong. Give the fire, New Home Missionary Baptist Church. After you that you can stand to your feet as we get ready for our seed declaration. Cheerfully now bring your offering and you'll have blessings running. I need more in my mic. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Blessings all. All right. Lift your right hand, extend your right hand, say, Lord, with a cheerful heart, I sow my seed. Today, I planted in good ground. Say, I believe my needs are met and my family is blessed. And I'm expecting a supernatural harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for the choir as they come.
bridge is empty And I am available Anybody want to tell the Lord I'm available for you today? You can use me how you want to use me My storage is empty And I am My storage is empty And I am available My storage is empty My life is not my own Grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, get to the book of Mark, chapter 5. Lord, do it. Lord, do it. Lord, do it. Lord, do it. Oh, do it for me. Mark chapter 5. What an old church at. You read. You read the Bible. You read the story, oh Lord, about the blind man who could not see. Look at your neighbor, tell him real quick, say one day, one day, one day, one day, Jesus, he was passing by. What did he say? He said, lay your hand. Lay your hand, lay your hand on me. Yeah, I wish I had an old Baptist church that'll just open your mouth and say, Lord, do it. I need you tonight, I need you this morning. Lord, do it. Yeah, Lord, do it for me. Yeah. Not my sister, not my brother. Lord, do it. Do it. I know he's able. Do it for me. Yeah. All right. Book of Mark. Book of Mark, chapter 5. Chapter 5. Now. I want to look at these few verses, these few verses, chapter 5, verse number 21. If you have your Bibles, you have it. If it's on the screen, come on, look at the screen. It says, and when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him and he was beside the sea. 22 says, then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And seeing him, he fell at his feet. 23 says, and employed him earnestly, saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Look at your neighbor real quick. Say, neighbor, pastor's going to preach. This is taking too long. Look at somebody say, this is taking too long. This is, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is, this is taking, I need more in the monitors. This is taking too long. It's taking too long. In my 33 years 
I've realized that living life as a Christian is not as easy as we make it seem on Sunday. Pray, I pray I have a prayer in church this morning that when it comes to the walk of a Christian, it seems as if it is the hardest thing to do sometimes. I don't know about you, but I'm real about my proclivities and my issues that sometimes my flesh wants to act a fool. I came for the real folk this morning. The rest of y'all said, and sanctified folk, holler, you too blessed to be stressed. You can leave now. I need the real folk in the room that can testify when I'm trying to do the right thing. It always seemed like the enemy got somebody at my job. Come on. Somebody at the schoolhouse. Some, somebody gonna mess with me. And the Christian walk is hard sometimes. Because the reality is, when you don't do anything to anybody, everybody want to do something to you. It gets hard, it gets hard, it gets, it gets hard. The walk is hard. But can I be honest, it's not just the walk, although I'm the pastor and I'm telling you that you've got to be employed to do the works of God. For those of you who've been serving know that even doing the work of God can get hard too. Oh, you find yourself having to deal with the same demonic issues and people that you deal with in the world. There's even three times more of them when you come into the church house. I wish y'all would be real with me this morning. It's hard dealing with church folks sometimes because the reality is the devil knows that if I can't get you in the world, I can get you in the church house. Oh, here. He'll, he'll literally cause people to begin to cause issues uh, simply because you're doing the will of God. But I've come to tell you that although the walk is hard, I see my time, I ain't got much. Although the, 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 the work gets hard, I've discovered that the hardest thing to deal with in the Christian life that we live is the weight. Uh, it's, 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 it's the weight. It's the weight that, that gives you the worst and the hardest time because you believe that when God said it, that it shall come right then. Matter of fact, a few of us would just sing the song, do it for me right now. And the reality is, child of God, God does not always move when you want him to move. But you know you have a matured faith when you can deal with the reality that he has not moved yet, but you still know he's going to move. I'm looking for the mature folk today who are just like the man in this picture have been looking at your watch, trying to, to equate when God is coming by way of chronology. But I've come to tell you God is a Kairos type of God. He's not a chrono type of God. He may not come when you want him, but he'll show be on time. I, I wish I had a witness up in the house that can testify when I wanted him to make it happen. It did not happen. But when I least expected it, God showed up and he showed out. I need at least five people who can wave your, band, your hand back at your boy and tell me that God did it for me. And so the weight gets hard. And I want you to just tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, keep on waiting. Because there's some things that God told you he was going to do for you in January. And some of y'all are beginning to lose your mind because you don't see it happening yet. Some of y'all been saying all week long, this is taking too long, God. I need you to just make it happen and make it happen fast. But I've come to tell you, this is Facebookable, you better write it down. Sometimes God's delays are for your development. You, you, you swear you waiting on God now, baby. God is waiting on you. You saying it's taking too long. God been in heaven tapping his toes for a long time. Waiting for your character 
to get ready for the blessing that he had for you in 1991. You ought to nudge your neighbor and say, get right, get right. So the question is, well, if the walk is hard, if the work is hard, if the weight is hard, if reverend sometimes God's delays are for our development, why and what do I need to get right? Let's look at the text. The Bible begins to declare to us that there's a brother by the name of Jairus. Jairus, if you do your biblical research, is a high-ranking official. Uh, chairman, he's so high-ranking that he's in charge of the synagogue. And what we find out about this is simply that as high ranking as he is, as, as, as with as much uh, publicity he's had, as, as great of a person he is, he's still got problems. It, it shows us that literally you can have public positions but still have to deal with private problems. It, it shows us literally that sometimes we get so caught up in who the world says we are that we think that we won't have to go through anything. But can I be a testimony for a few of y'all in the house? I can preach the word and still have to apply the word. I can preach the word and understand the word and still have to deal with the world. But I got to put the word on the world. Even though you might look high up, you still got to deal with more attacks from the enemy and all I'm saying to somebody is you ought not think too much of yourself uh, because of the higher you think you are the more the enemy can see up your skirt uh, and he's going to attack you as much as he can and so 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 J. Iris has a problem his daughter is sick his daughter is sick and it looks as if his daughter is about to die. And I can just imagine if you've heard this story before, which I'm pretty sure you have, uh, J. Iris needs God to move immediately. Oh, he's thinking God needs to hurry up and move because there's something that God has to do for me. And I don't need the interruptions uh, along the way. I know there's a crowd that wants God. I know there's a crowd that's thronging for him to come and touch them and heal them and make them better. But Jairus says, although I might be high ranking, I know that if I get the hand of God in my heinous situation, then my situation will get better. I love it child of God because no matter how bad his private problems were no matter how high his public position was he still understood he needed to pray to the problem solver and here J. Iris is walking up to Jesus saying Jesus I need you to come to my house and see about my daughter Jesus begins to walk towards his daughter and he begins to walk towards J. Iris's house but out of nowhere there's a woman who comes and gets a blessing out of season and I want to pause here parenthetically and let somebody know that we serve a God that will make interruptions he will allow interruptions to get you the blessing that you need that ain't even my sermon this morning but there's somebody in the house who needs to know that God will upset the chronology he'll upset the order he'll mess up the rules just so he can get you what you need but this text is that J. Iris is being interrupted He's making his way towards his house so that Jesus can touch his daughter. And the first thing God says, I've got to delay getting there because I need you to see my work. Uh, for the note takers, I need you to write that down. I'm writing it down too. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, I need you to see my work. I need you to see my work. Why is it that God will allow you to watch other folk get blessed and you still waiting on your miracle? Why is it that the Lord will allow you to see other folk get stuff on Facebook and IG and all these other places and you still haven't seen the hand of God move in your life? God said, 
says I'm trying to develop you and develop your faith to understand baby you ain't got to believe in something you ain't never seen before I'm going to put the miracle right in front of you so that you can see what I've done for us uh oh where my mama at ain't no secret what God can do what he's done for others he can do the same for you and I came to tell somebody in the house today God said I did it so you could see my word alright my time winding down I, I, I see it he, he says I had to I had to delay you Jay Iris not because I didn't want to come to your house he said I wanted to show you that I can heal folk on accident all right, y'all bring y'all there. It's in the Bible. If your Bible's open, your app's unlocked. The text says that the woman is up in her house and she hears that Jesus is coming by. This woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years and she said to herself, I've been to the doctors. I've talked to the nurses. They couldn't get me right. I've spent all my money. This is a real problem and it won't stop. But I heard there's a man named Jesus that is passing through my town and she said, if I just press, I can get to him. She said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Jesus wasn't studying that woman. He was just walking, minding his own business. But when she touched the hem of his garment, he healed her own accident. And all I'm saying to you is if God can heal her own accident, if God can take care of them on accident, if he told you he gonna do it for you, he's gonna do it for you. If God said it, that settles it. Look at your neighbor and tell him God's going to do it. He's going to do it. Now, 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 now. He said, I didn't, I didn't even mean to do that. She was an innocent bystander that just happened to touch the right thing at the right time on the right person. But God said, I'm so intentional concerning you. That if I did it for her on accident, J. Iris, I'm going to do it for you on purpose. And I came to tell somebody this next season of your life, uh, God's going to bless you on purpose. Uh, God ain't even doing this on accident. He's going to bless you right where you need the blessing. Uh, right how you need the blessing. Uh, and he's going to bless the right. You ought to tell somebody up in this house uh, that God's going to do it for me. Just like I, I, <laughs> I hear T.I. now, the Lord said, you can have whatever you like if you make sure that you're living the life that I've called you to live. Now, now, the text moves, and I, you know, I, I love to look at the text in a, in a very ebonic, thuggish, hood way, you know. I like to take the scripture down the boulevard and get close to the projects because that's that's who Jesus Christ was dealing with he was he was dealing with folk that weren't so highfalutin and prideful that they didn't act like they needed he was dealing with the folk that needed his help and I think I got some folk in this house that need the Lord's help and what God said is I am delayed so you can see my work Lord have mercy but secondly he said I'm delaying so you can stand on my word. Lord have mercy. Y'all, y'all, y'all quiet up in here. I, I love it because the text begins to tell us that the Lord says to him, he says simply to him, he said, you've got to make sure that you understand that she is not dead. Oh, he healed the woman on accident. He begins to walk and the report comes and says, your daughter is now dead. Jesus looks at the, 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 the father and he says, no, she ain't dead. She just sleep. Uh, yeah, I feel it. I feel it. It's about five rows back. I don't know which side, but, 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 but you asking the question right now. Well, I heard what God said, but it don't look like what he said. I heard what God said, but it don't seem like what God said. I, 
I, I heard what God said, but it seems like it's getting darker and the end is near. But God said, I'm delaying you so that you can stand on my word. Because if I said there's still life in it, there's still life in it. God said, if I have not said that it's over, it is not over until I say it's over. And I came to talk to at least five people. Matter of fact, I want to prophesy into your life that there's still life in that thing. And you've been trying to give up. You've been trying to throw in the tower. You've been trying to quit. You've been trying to run away from it. But God said there's still life in that. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe they closer to you on your row. Look down your row and tell somebody there's still life in it. I need you to prophesy to your row. Everything on my row is living. Everything connected to me is living. Everything around me is living. There shall be no death. There is life all around me. It's mental health awareness month. And there's folk who are dealing with stuff that you won't ever see. And what I want to tell you, child of God, to do when you get to your job on Monday is begin to speak life to your office. Begin to speak life to your employees and co-workers. Begin to every time you see them and they're complaining, you just tell them live, 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 live. Matter of fact, I see the children are in here. You ought to point to the kids and say live, live, live. You won't be a statistic. You you won't be dead and gone. You 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 you're gonna you're gonna make it. You will live out your destiny. You li- will live out your true meaning of life. Live, live, live. And so he says. She ain't dead. There's still life in her because she's just sleeping. Now, uh, man, I, I look at the text, and if I were Jay Iris, I'd, I'd be telling the Lord, okay, I saw you do it for her. I heard what you said. I'm not going to argue with what your word was because I still see you walking. And if Jesus is still walking, that means he still intends on doing the work. For the five of y'all who called it, all I'm saying to you is, He might not be working in the front of your life, but he's still working in the background of your life. I need some of y'all to give some love to your administrative assistant that Jesus will work in the background and make sure that it works right in the front. I don't know who I'm talking to, but he's working in the back and he's going to put it together in the front. And I need the saints this morning. I got one more point to go. But since I'm right here, I got to tell you, God is able to work the bad and the good, to work the happy and the sad, to work what made you mad and what made you glad. The Bible says, uh, and we know uh, that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Yeah, who love the Lord. Can I check the house this morning? Is there anybody here that loves the Lord? Why don't you wave your hand? If you know he's been good to you, why don't you wave your hand? If you know he set you free, why don't you wave your hand? If you know he died on Calvary, but in three days he rose with all power, power in his hand. You ought to lift up your hands and tell the Lord, I don't mind waiting. Because you got uh, something good for me. Wait a minute. Uh, 
I gotta give you my last point. God says, uh, I waited a long time because I wanted you to see my work. God said, uh, I waited a long time because I wanted to see uh, if you would stand on my word. But can I give you this point? God said, uh, I had to wait a little bit longer because you had the wrong people in your life. The Bible says uh, Jesus walks into Jairus' house and he looked around uh, and he saw the mourners. Uh, they were weeping in the well and they were weeping in the well and uh, the mourners thought uh, that she was dead. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, Jesus know uh, you can't get a blessing uh, when you got the wrong folk in your life uh, because they will uh, they'll spoil you the blessing uh, that God has for you they will uh, get in the way uh, of the promise God has on your life uh, so every now and then uh, you gotta tell some folk uh, just like Jesus did uh, you gotta get up out of here uh, because we gotta be on one accord uh, I need some people in my life uh, that got faith in their body I need some people in my life uh, that can talk with faith uh, that will walk with faith uh, that will live in faith uh, I don't need uh, no more of your negativity uh, because the God I serve uh, he said there's still life in my situation and because God said there's life I don't care what you say about it I believe that God will turn it around is there anybody here that don't mind helping your boy clothed Easter speech if you know like I know her that God is able uh, to turn it around uh, whatever your it is uh, whatever your situation may be uh, you ought to leap up to your feet uh, and just make a turn uh, because every time uh, I turn around uh, the Lord uh, he keeps making ways for me is there anybody uh, that can shout hallelujah uh, because you know all the doors he's opened because you know all the ways he's made because you know all the times he's healed your body he's kept your mind he made a way not just for you but he made a way for your family he made a way for your spouse he made a way for your children and I'm just wondering is there anybody in the house that'll take this reminder and just take 10 seconds and give God a praise because you know he done done it before and if he did it before if he did it before if he did it before the same God the same God he will he'll do it again look at your neighbor and say neighbor he'll do it he'll do it I said neighbor he'll do it he'll do it I need you to find a neighbor one time for me I want you to grab somebody who ain't on the same road with you cross the if you got to uh, look them in the face uh, and say neighbor it might have been a long time but special orders uh, take time uh, what God's about to do uh, he gonna blow your mind uh, eyes have not seen ears have not heard uh, the good things that God has in store for you. I need somebody. I need somebody. I 
need somebody that know that God is able. Open up your mouth and give him a shout. Yeah! Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You ought to open up your mouth and praise God like it's already done. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait until the battle's over. But open up your mouth and shout now. I said shout now. I said shout now. I said shout now. I've been waiting. 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 But I don't know when my change is going to come. And I came to tell somebody, you can't hurry God if you just wait. God's going to make it happen for you. God's going to flip the script. God's going to put his hand on your situation. I don't know who I'm talking to but I want you to know that you're not by yourself all the folk who waiting for God to do something in your life come on lift your hands right where you are all of us need God to do something and God said I've got you in the waiting room because there are some things that I need you to understand David said I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. He said, I got to walk because there's some lessons I've got to learn. I've got to walk because there's some things that I need to attain. There's some lessons and some things that God is trying to show me. And I believe in this season, a lot of us have been waiting the fifth month of the year. But I've come to tell you, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should ever repent. If God said it, that settles it. It shall be done. I want to pray for whoever's hand is up right now. Those of you who are waiting. Father God, we thank you for the wait. Because we understand, God, that the wait is establishing patience in our life. Whatever it may be that we're waiting on, dear Lord, we know that as long as your presence is still around us, that you're still working for us. We understand, Father God, that delay is not denial. We understand, Father God, that whatever situation we're in, it might look like it's dead, but God, you're speaking life into us now. Speaking life into the person to the left or the right of us. You're giving us, Father God, the strength and the courage to keep fighting and keep going on and keep pressing on because we understand, God, that there is a blessing in the pressing. And as we're waiting, God, we're shifting our perspective because we've seen you work through and for others. Because now we're standing on your word. Wait, I say on the Lord. Because we got to get the right or the, rather the wrong people out of our spaces. People that believe that God is able to do it. God, we're leaning on you. And in this moment, Father God, 
we're not in, in, in simply asking for you to hurry up but rather Father God we're asking you for the patience so we can wait long enough because God we know that in the fullness of time when you present it to us that Father God everything that we need will be aligned we want to walk in your will we want to walk in your way we don't mind waiting for you Lord it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray that patience is our virtue we don't lose heart because we're waiting we don't lose faith because we're waiting we just keep waiting knowing that you're still willing it's in Jesus name we all shout amen doors of the church are open somebody does not know who God is somebody does not know who Jesus Christ is in your life today is your moment today is your day I don't know who we're talking to but I believe child of God that God has something great in store for you I said God has something great in store for you come on sing a little bit of it don't mind I want you to encourage your neighbor real quick. Look down your road. Say, neighbor, keep waiting, keep waiting. But I believe there's somebody else in here who does not know who Jesus Christ is, or maybe you want to connect with this body by way of Christian experience. All of us standing all over the house. This is a prayerful moment. Come on, let's stand all over the house. Come on. This is a prayerful moment because there's someone who's wrestling with a decision whether to put their life in the Lord's hand whether to make a connection with the place that God desires for them to be I don't know who this is that's warring under the sound of my voice but God says I've got better on the other side of your decision your breakthrough is on the other side of your decision now if you're online maybe you're online on Facebook on YouTube we want you to hit us up at newhomestrong at gmail.com. Send us your name. Send us your number. I believe that this is a place where you can grow. I believe this is a place where God's going to show you and reveal to you who he is. But you just got to keep on waiting. You got to keep on waiting. Amen. You got to keep on waiting. I know the Lord. We'll make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Uh, I know the law. We'll make a way. Yes, he will. Yeah. He will make a way for you and the Lord. He will see you safely through. Everybody who knows it, come on, say, I know the Lord. We We get ready to move, but do I got a church in here who knows it? Yes, he will. I need a few believers to help me this morning. Say, yes, he will. Yeah, yeah. I tried him for myself, and I know that he will. We get ready to move, y'all. But I gotta encourage somebody. The Lord will. Yes, He will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know the Lord will make a way. Yeah. Oh, oh. Pastor and New Home Church.
church family. Today we have Sister Chelsea Rock coming on the Christian Experience. Come on church, let's make some noise. Amen. Now, we thank God for Sister Chelsea, who is coming. She's been working for a while. She's been working for a while. And um, we're so excited to have her. She's the fiance of our brother up top. And they've been working with the Young Saints Ministry. And she thought it not robbery to be a part of this church family. And so because you thought it not robbery to be connected to us, we're excited to be connected to you. Now, in our excitement, we're excited because we know the gifts, the skills, the anointing that God has on your life. And we want to continue to deposit into you just as much as you deposit into this house. Now, you've been here for quite some time, so the, everything that's on that card, I know you know what it is. I know you know what it means. So, New Home, what do we say? Welcome home. Amen. Come on, give God praise for what he's doing. Uh -oh. I almost missed a step, but the Lord saved me. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, he will. It's communion time. If you have your communion. Yeah, see, well, it's communion time. I know, I know, I know, I know the Lord will make a way. As we're transitioning for communion, it's necessary for you to set your hearts and your minds on Jesus Christ. And all that he's done for us. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, set your mind on Jesus Christ. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it, say it. Come on, church, sing it loud. You deserve it. You deserve it. Say my hallelujah. Come on, help me, church. My hallelujah. Say my hallelujah. Say my hallelujah. Belongs to you. We're waiting for those online. You deserve it. Come on, let's worship the Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it. All that you've done for us. Say all of the glory. All of the glory belongs. If you don't have communion, lift your hand wherever you may be. All of the glory belongs. Yeah, all of the glory. All of the glory. One time, everybody open your mouth. Tell them you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. 
deserve it. You deserve it. For those of you who are online, whatever you have, bread, crackers, juice, we want you to take communion with us. The Bible says, as often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me. What I love about Christianity is that you can come into the fold of Christ any type of way. God's going to embrace you where you are and how you come. But the reality of the table is you can't come to the table any kind of way. The Bible teaches us that y'all not come because you're hungry. But you ought to come because you're ready to lift his name higher. Then the Bible tells us that y'all not come with the spirit of confusion or contrition. But rather, if you have issues with others, you ought to forgive them and then come to the table. But it was at that table that Jesus Christ was surrounded by his disciples. And he began to commence what we call communion. I believe y'all are ready online. I want to pray a prayer of consecration. We have the ministers here. I'm going to yield to Minister Peacock, but I want you to make sure that your heart is in the right posture. Because he said that those who drink unworthily, unready, without disciplining themselves, they are drinking unto damnation, unto their souls. Now, I believe that, that if your posture is right, if your heart's right, that you're already in a posture of worship and you're ready for a word of prayer. I'm going to yield once again, but I want you to stay in a worshipful state because this is a worship encounter. My brothers and sisters, let us pray. Oh, heavenly and gracious Father, the Father of all of the matriarchs and patriarchs of the Old and New Testament, Father, we thank you for giving us this day, a day that we will never see again. But because we are here and we are truly ready to serve you in spirit, in truth, that's what we're going to do. Heavenly Father, we know that you gave your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to wipe away all of the sins of this world. So, Heavenly Father, we do not take this moment of celebrating that what you have given us lightly. Heavenly Father, we take it as something that is deep and is penetrating to our heart. And Heavenly Father, as we take upon this communion, we celebrate your only begotten son that bled, died, and rose on the third day for our salvation. Heavenly Father, we love you and we adore you, even though we always don't all the time get it right. Heavenly Father, we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And for that, Father, we thank you. In these things, we ask and we say amen, amen, amen. So Jesus took the cup, or rather the bread, broke the bread. He said to the disciples, he said, take, eat, this is my body of the New Testament. Let us eat all of it. Likewise manner, Jesus Christ took the cup. He blessed the cup. He passed the cup. He said, drink for this is my blood of the New Testament. Let us drink all of it. The Bible says they ascended into the Mount of Olives, singing hymns and praise unto him. We are not ascending up any mountaintops, but we do believe that it's necessary to give God praise. Can we give God a shout of thanksgiving? Come on. Come on, you can do better than that. Thank God for Jesus. I said, thank God for Jesus. I said, thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. We're getting ready to leave. I don't think I missed anything. Okay. All right. So for the mothers, for the mothers, I think you have already signed up uh, for what was going to be um, a Mother's Day dinner. Um, it's now going to be a Mother's Day brunch. Where's Deacon Demar? Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock on this Saturday. Ten o'clock this Saturday. Is there another sign-up sheet in the foyer? All right. There's a new sign-up sheet in the foyer. We'd love for the members and the mothers uh, to sign up. So that we can pay homage to you for all that you've done for us and for your children. Amen. Amen. All right. That's a brunch this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Uh, it looks like y'all be seated in the presence of the Lord. It looks like we have a special guest here. Uh, I see my brother uh, from another beautiful mother here, uh, brother Philip Insler. I want to give you an opportunity to come tell this church who you are uh, and what you have going on in this season of your life. I believe it's always imperative that church folk, you can come on, that church folk get the opportunity to know who is running for office and in who is doing things in the community. Can we give God praise for him? Amen. Good morning. Uh, well, I will certainly keep it uh, brief. Uh, thank you, Pastor Walker. It, it really is uh, a blessing to, to be here. Um, I, way of quick background, uh, I taught at Lee High School from 2012 to 2014, uh, so it's good to uh, see some other uh, MPS uh, teachers in here. Uh, having been in, in the trenches, uh, I know it is, it is not easy every day, um, but our, our kids deserve the best, um, and we need to keep pushing and doing what we can uh, to make sure that all of our kids have access to the, the best opportunities uh, I decided to leave teaching, though, and then went to law school, uh, and since then have, have walked, uh, worked mostly in policy uh, to try to make our laws more fair and just. I uh, had the privilege of working uh, at City Hall as the senior policy advisor, uh, wrote a lot of, of ordinances and legislation there, uh, but I'm now running for House District 74, uh, and it spans uh, all parts of the city, uh, all the way down in Woodley Park and Spring Valley, uh, all the way through uh, uh, Green Acres, Vaughn Meadows, uh, the Delreda area, County Downs, uh, then all the way up to part of Chisholm and all the way over to Lagoon Park. Uh, so it's a, a wide ranging district. Uh, but the re and uh, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to serve everyone. Uh, I will say, though, that the lines have been redrawn, that it leans Democratic. Uh, so there is a great opportunity uh, to try to flip that district. Uh, so there is a, a primary on May 24th. And then if we get through that, there's a general in November. Um, and the main reason that I'm running is that from people I talk to, whether it's in the most southern part of the district or the most northern part and everywhere in between, uh, people want solutions to real issues. And you turn on the TV and you see these ads that are filled with lies and hatred uh, and they're focused on everything but actual solutions to actual problems. And people are tired of people that only come around when it's time to run for office and they promise all sorts of things and then disappear. And then they get caught up with special interest. They say one thing and then vote another way. Right? So we need leadership that's going to advocate for the community, that's going to stand up for it. And the most important thing, and then I'll, I'll take my seat, is that the young people I taught at Lee, um, and Alan uh, Williams, who's outside, is one of them, right, they're constantly watching me, um, and they're watching to see, do I do what I say? Right, so when I, if I fortunately I am able to serve the district, right, they're keeping their eyes on me. So if I've, I've been telling them all these years, well, you know, do this, or treat people this way, or treat people that way, right, they're going to look at me and see, am I doing what I taught them to do and that's the most important thing that for our young people, that there are role models, right? We all make mistakes at times, we mess up, but they want to see that we're sincere, that we're honest. We can't change everything, but we can fight to make it a little bit better. Uh, so I ask for your vote and support. I appreciate you all. Thank you, Pastor Walker. It's good to be here.
Come on, let's make some more noise for Brother Philip Insler. Amen. Amen. He said, you want solutions to problems, you need to remember his name, Insler. Insler. All right, we thank God for each of you who are here today. I think if that ever is anything else left, I do want to remind you, thank you so much, Minister Jones. Uh, pastor's doing so much, sometimes I forget what I ought to be doing. Uh, on tomorrow night, we will be in Revival uh, in the city of Opelika, Alabama, with the Bethel Number 1 Missionary Baptist Church. I'll be preaching the first night of Revival. Uh, that begins, it says, at 6.30 nightly. Um, but we will be going there, and the choir will be there with us. Uh, so if you can't make it down to Opelika, traveling those roads, it's my prayer that you'll pray for us as we go. Amen? Amen. Can y'all give this choir some encouragement? I don't have an address for you. Um, we will send all it out via email. Because uh, if I read it, y'all ain't going to write it down no way. Amen. Uh, what's that? I'm lost. We've already done offering. Um, you can get his offering. <laughs> he wasn't in here. He wasn't in here. It's all right. If you do have any more tithes and offering to give, you definitely can hit us up on Cash App, Dollar Sign, New Home Strong. Once again, give Lafay New Home Missionary Baptist Church. If you have any tangible gifts, uh, you can place that in the basket as you leave. It's my prayer that you learn something. Anybody learn something today? I can't hear you. Did you learn anything today? I want to, uh, I want to greet you all in the foyer. Brother Insler, if you don't mind, if you can meet us back here, uh, we want to greet the membership as they leave, at least with a fist bump. Uh, we won't tear it long. We don't want to hold you up. I know y'all want to go eat. Uh, but can we stand up? It's a first Sunday. As we get ready to leave, uh, give me an A flat. Me, 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 me. There we go. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. If you can, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. If you can. Reach out and touch If you can Reach out and touch Somebody's hand Make this world a better place If you can Let's pray Father God we thank you for your grace and your mercy You've been good to us Your omnipotence your omnipresence, your omniscience. God, we're grateful that you are you. We're grateful, Father God, that you have the name that's above all names. The name above sickness, the name above cancer, the name above diabetes. You've got power over it all. And dear God, as we've heard what we've heard and we've seen what we've seen, we pray that every soul under the sound of my voice is encouraged to keep holding fast to your unchanging hand. It's my prayer, dear Lord, that as we leave this place, we don't leave your presence, that your joy overtakes us and overwhelms us, that your peace, Father God, that surpasses all understanding, becomes our portion, that you guide us and keep us, Father God, along this highway of life. It's our prayer, dear Lord, that you touch those who are sick and shut in, that you touch those who are in the hospital right now. Give them, Father God, healing, grace, and mercy. Give the physicians the wisdom, Father God, to know what it is that they must do. And Father God, we speak and plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. That no hurt, harm, or danger shall come to them. Now, Lord, as we leave, let your precious spirit stay with us. Father God, as we leave this place... We pray that all that has been said, all that has been done, all that has been declared, everything that we prophesied over our own lives, Father God, that it shall be unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Now unto him who is able to, to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, be our Savior, majesty, dominion, and power forever and evermore. And every saint of God says, Amen. Amen. Amen again.
Go in peace.